organization. Did you know you can drag your folders straight from your desktop into Premiere Pro, but you need at least two files in the folder. So what I'll usually do is I'll download my client A-Roll, B-Roll, voiceovers, whatever assets they give me, I'll organize the folders and then drag that folder straight into Premiere Pro. If you've got loads of footage of multiple cameras, A-Roll, B-Roll, etc., why not create a new sequence from each camera source so you can easily scrub through the footage before pulling it into your main edit? While you're scrubbing through your footage, it's a good idea to make cuts on your absolute favorite parts and then pull them up to track two. This will make it a lot easier to find them later and this is called pull-in selects. You can drag a second sequence into your timeline by pulling it from the project panel into the blue bar thing down here and now you can easily scrub through your selects and pull them into your main edit. You can right click on clips in your timeline and click label to label your clips a different color. Color coding clips is great for remembering what is A roll, what is B roll, who's talking etc and can also make it easier to find clips later on. If you've made great progress on an edit and you're about to lay in some music or B roll, you can right click on the sequence, click duplicate and I have a backup in case anything goes wrong. You can also create a bin called old sequences and just drag the old version into here to keep it tidy but still have the backup. You can click Shift and E to enable or disable a track. Now you can stack clips on top of each other, test different footage and easily make changes later. If you right click on a clip and click replace with After Effects composition, it will open up a new composition in After Effects. This makes it really easy to quickly design and animate titles and the results go straight into Premiere Pro. You don't need to render or anything like that. You can also duplicate the composition in After Effects, change the title, or the animation and then drag this straight into the Premiere Pro project panel. I like to make a folder called link comps and leave these compositions in there. These are perfect for listicle type videos or videos with chapters where you just need to swap out a word in an animation. Let's get into some editing. Cutting on action it's called a match cut. For example the hammer hits and the orange bounces. Another example could be someone throwing their phone and cutting to an explosion. If your video is losing momentum, you can add a slow scale or zoom to keep your clip moving. This is called the Ken Burns effect. It works really well with static images. You can also make the animation look better by right clicking on the first keyframe and clicking ease in and right clicking on the second keyframe and clicking ease out. And this will give it a much more gradual, smooth motion. To create this projector like effect when images come in, simply zoom into your image slightly, add a small movement and blur to introduce the image and add a camera sound effect bonus points. Even better, if you click on the original clip, hold control and select motion and Gaussian blur, you can now go to the first keyframe on your next clip so you can just paste the effect straight over. You might need to scale in a little bit on the new image. And by the way, I get my sound effects from Artlist as well as my music and my footage and I'm a partner with them. So if you hit the link in the description below, you can get an exclusive discount. You can use dust, volumetric lighting and other textures to really add depth and bring your images to life. You can get these assets for free with Google or you can get them alongside millions of other assets from Motion Array. I've also left a link below for an exclusive discount for those if you want to check them out. Desaturating your images helps create this flashback look. So if you've got saturated images and desaturated, saturated looks like the present, desaturated looks like the past. Alternating between these can help visually tell a story and if you've ever seen the film Memento, it'll all make way more sense now. Lenny! Don't just add transitions and effects everywhere. Always be thinking, does this add to the video? If not, don't put it in, leave it out. The three Lumetri scopes you want to use are Vector, YUB, Parade, RGB and Waveform Luma. Vector scope YUB shows color and saturation. If you increase the saturation, the middle splash will expand and you don't want this to exceed the inside line or your image will be oversaturated. Also, using the color temp and tint sliders to get between the yellow and red icons will help you get better skin tones as this is the skin tone line. Parade RGB helps you visually set your white balance and see the color cast in your image. So if your image is too blue, for example, the blue side will be higher than the red. Moving the temp to the warmer side will help balance this graph and set your white balance. The waveform luma shows your blacks, whites and overall exposure. Increasing your whites will increase the graph higher. Decreasing the blacks will drop the graph lower and increasing contrast stretches the graph from the middle. To avoid crushing your blacks or overexposing your whites, 
make sure not to squish the lines at the top or the bottom. Bonus tip, if you want to get really good at making videos and making money while making videos like I've been doing for five years full time, subscribe to this channel and go check out my courses on Skillshare. There's a link in the description, get a month free. Sound design. Sound is 50% of viewer experience and arguably more important than the visuals. If you have audio recorded in stereo, you can type in the effects bar fill and click fill left with right or fill right with left. This will copy one of the tracks to the other and give you mono sound. To make vocals extra crispy, why not add a parametric equalizer, select loudness maximizer, and slightly raise the highs. This is me speaking without editing the audio, and this is me speaking while editing the audio. I will say though, I have got a really good mic, best mic I've ever seen out the box, this is Shure MV7X, and of course, there's a link in the description for this microphone. Starting your audio before the upcoming clip can make it look super pro. This is done in documentaries a lot, and this is known as a J-cut. Good to see you as well. Thanks for coming out. We, we did have to run a bunch of trucks. The exponential fade audio transition is a constant increase or decrease, so imagine a straight or decreasing line in volume. The constant power transition adds a curve to the increase or decrease, giving it more or less momentum and is more abrupt. To easily balance your audio, just hit solo on the audio track and watch through your footage and make adjustments by right clicking and audio gain plus or minus and keeping the audio the same volume. You can do this for your A roll and your sound effects if you keep them separately on different tracks. In fact, to make your audio visually easier to see, you can lock a track between each of the layers and now you can easily separate your sound effects from your main audio. Keep your A roll or main volume between minus three and minus nine dB, ideally minus six, and don't let it clip into the reds. Keep your sound effects between minus 12 and minus 18 dB so they don't drown out the audio. Whooshes are great sound effects for movement, impacts and trailer hips can be good for visual impacts and transitions and trailer style titles. And I love a little camera click or a keyboard click when I'm showing something pop up on the screen. And don't be lazy with your music selection. Take some time to find music that fits the right vibe for the message in your video. If it's an emotional story, you might want to use something like strings or something sentimental. And if it's an action, you might want to go for rock or something like beat. Don't be afraid to change the pace as the video requires. And you guessed it, I get all my music from Artlist because you can just scroll through, find the different genres and types and tempos and everything really easily, related tracks, makes it really easy to pick and find good tracks. And I'm a partner with them and I have an exclusive discount for you in the link in the description. Drop a comment if you learned something new from this video or drop a comment if you didn't. Like, unlike, dislike, subscribe, all that good stuff. Thanks, and don't forget, you can get a free trial with me and learn on Skillshare and go make money making videos. All right, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.